All right, so this is the last podcast of the unit, and we've covered the models, we've covered the astronomers and their uh, different laws that govern how things move. We've studied how the solar system formed and the planets, and this is just basically everything that's left over, the space junk. All right, and that covers a lot uh, of little things. For example, let's start off with asteroids. Asteroids, uh, as you guys know, uh, are mostly found if you watch that uh, video on how the Earth, excuse me, how the solar system formed between Mars and Jupiter. And they're leftovers from the beginning of the solar system. And they can range in size, all right, from very, very small to uh, very, very large. And in fact, they can also have all kinds of different shapes. Some are round, like plants. This is Ceres, the largest asteroid. In fact, early on when it was first discovered, we thought it was a planet. Uh, so Pluto is not the first thing to get kicked out of planetary status. Uh, but then we realized that it wasn't alone. As our technology uh, grew, we had better telescopes that resolved. There are actually a lot of these uh, asteroids floating around in between Mars and Jupiter. So we just thought it was a big asteroid, not a true planet. But again, you can notice that it's round. It is large enough that it, uh, its gravity turned it into a nice round shape. Uh, but they can be irregular shaped like this one. And in fact, they can even have little moons, so to speak, like this guy. All right. But an asteroid is basically mostly rock. All right. And mostly located in stable orbits between Mars and Jupiter. A couple other things. Uh, sometimes pieces of asteroids all right, can fly into Earth's atmosphere, and when they do, they are given one of three names. A meteoroid is just any kind of fragment that hits our atmosphere. All right. Now, when that happens, it can burn up, it can just skip out of the atmosphere, or it can actually impact us. And if it starts to burn up, all right, that's known as a meteor, or what you guys probably call them, a shooting star. All right, this is when that material actually is uh, hitting the atmosphere at such a high rate of speed, it causes the air around it to glow. It's not actually the piece of meteorite itself only glowing, all right, but the gases in the atmosphere that are being heated up by this extremely fast moving asteroid. Some of these things are moving. Um, at about 25 miles a second. All right, that's very, very fast. Uh, what else? Um, Size-wise, what might surprise you, again, these aren't stars that are uh, hitting our atmosphere, but just pieces of debris. And most meteors are only about the size of dust and sand grains. They can be bigger. All right? Some can be very, very large. Uh, but really, most are very tiny. If there's anything left, all right, after being burned up in the atmosphere, if there's pieces that actually impact, they're called meteorites. Okay, um, but luckily our atmosphere does a pretty good job of burning up most of the stuff that hits. And here's a picture of a fairly large piece, uh, known as a fireball. Now comets. Comets are a little bit different. They are not just rock, but more ice. All right, half ice, half rock, and again. Uh, they have their own little places that they're found. <clears throat> if you think back, there is that rock line and there's that ice line. Past the ice line, you can get uh, more ice forming. And comets are either found in the Kuiper Belt, which is just beyond uh, Uranus and Neptune, or in a place even farther out known as the Oort Cloud. Now, Pluto is part of this Kuiper Belt. It is one of these big, large... Um, <clears throat> comet, basically, uh, that's half, half ice, half rock, is actually uh, one of the largest, but it may not be the largest anymore. The Oort Cloud, however, is another space uh, that's further out, and this is where you find comets with really long periods, uh, hundreds or even thousands of years. So let's distinguish these a little bit. Kuiper Belt, Still made out of uh, basically half ice, half rock comets, but <clears throat> uh, it's relatively close, and it is more of a belt. All right, kind of like the asteroid belt. It is 
is an, uh, a cloud that forms around us. Whereas the Oort cloud is more of an actual cloud. All right, three dimension. It goes all the way around the solar system. All right, it's not just a thin belt that goes around it, but these are uh, very, very far out. In fact, we haven't actually seen a comet or anything sitting in the Kuiper belt. It's far too uh, distant. <clears throat> the only way that we can know that it's out there is that, again, comets, when we uh, trace out their path, we estimate that a lot of these uh, comets that are really long duration period uh, uh, comets come from a source that's very, very distant. We call that the Oort cloud. Now, a couple things about comets. Extremely eccentric, all right, um, and comet, the main thing that uh, they're known for is that they have a tail. They don't always have a tail. Uh, it only happens when that comet comes close to the sun and the gas that's, or the ice that's in it, it starts to vaporize and shoot off of it uh, and blows off a bunch of gas and dust. Now, the gas surrounding it, that's known as the coma. And in fact, uh, the actual icy, rocky uh, member is the nucleus. <clears throat> and as it gets closer to the sun, it gets brighter. Now, uh, one thing that students will assume is that you would imagine that the tail of a comet is actually being drugged behind it. What you actually see is that a comet's tail always faces away from the sun. <clears throat> this uh, Sometimes they have more than one tail, and that's a little complicated. But what happens in general is that there is a solar wind that drags that comet dust and uh, debris out away from the sun. So a comet's tail always faces away from it. It does not get dragged behind it. Last thing here. Meteor showers. All right. Now, we already talked about meteors as little bits and debris that's fl uh, flying into our atmosphere and burning up. And why didn't I talk about meteor showers then? Well, it's because they are related to comets. A couple things about meteor showers. You can see this time-lapse uh, picture that there are a lot of these streaks on here. And not all the streaks are coming from this general region. Uh, in a meteor shower, that's what we see. We see a lot of shooting stars that have an origin um, from one given constellation, sometimes the Le Leonid uh, meteor showers or the Taurus or the or whatever. Those are describing the source constellation. That's where they appear to be coming from. But it's an apparent motion. All right. What actually is happening here is if we go back to this comet, some of these comets will actually pass through our orbit. All right. Usually not at the same time as the Earth. Uh, that's usually a bad thing. But when it does pass along our orbit, all of this gas and dust doesn't just go away. It floats around and is still there after the comet's long gone. Well, if the Earth comes by, moving at 17,000 miles an hour, slams into that gas and dust that's left behind, you get a meteor shower where all of these meteors seem to be coming from one spot. A meteor shower is when we pass through an old comet's tail.